Ian, good morning. How you doing? Uh, good morning. How are you? I'm doing okay, man. Thanks so much for joining us. Obviously, the cloud of Josh Gordon is dark one. It's been a tough one for him. How long do you believe that Josh Gordon knew he was facing banishment? Well, this in general, um, these processes take not weeks, but, but months. Um, and so I would imagine that now, I mean, players can keep it a secret if they want. I mean, the letter comes to the players. So there have been times when players have not told the teams or the agents because it's really personal, especially one this serious with him. Uh, but, but these are generally not weeks. These are months. So my guess is that Josh Gordon has known for quite some time, has been trying to stay on the field as long as possible. Um, but when you have repeated violations of the NFL substance abuse policy, um, as he has had, um, this is obviously something he's used to. He tweeted that he is stepping away, uh, but obviously that's not accurate. That's not the whole story. He's being suspended uh, again. And, you know, then you have to wonder, unfortunately, um, you know, how is he able to restart his career at any other point? If he is suspended yet again by the NFL, do you think that ends up in lifetime banishment from the NFL? Uh, well, it is banishment, so that is one year, basically. So essentially, Gordon, and when, whenever they announce it, which does sound like it's coming soon, um, you know, whenever they announce it, it's going to be banishment, and then Gordon has to wait a year, and then he can reapply. We've seen him come back from banishment before, but it has not been, you know, it has not been smooth. Remember, he, he was about to come back from banishment one time with the Browns, and then uh, ended up having to enter into a treatment program again a couple of days before he was going to come back. I mean, this is obviously something that is incredibly serious, incredibly sad. I can't understand it, uh, thankfully, um, and I hope I never can. But it's it's obviously terrible. And, uh, you know, for Josh Gordon, for life, you hope for the best. Uh, because I don't think this has anything to do with football anymore. Ian Rappaport joins us here from NFL Network this morning. For Gordon... Is it alcoholism? Is it marijuana? Is it other drugs? Do we know? Do not know. Do not know. I know, I know in the past he has been public in a GQ article, for instance, he was stating that uh, uh, it was many substances. I know people assumed it was weed, but he talked about you know drinking Crown before games, doing cocaine, um, a lot of other drugs. I don't know what it is in this case. I just know what he's publicly discussed in the past. You know, people will look at this and say, see, the Patriots gambled and they lost. And yet, as you pointed out over Twitter, this was actually a really good gamble for the Patriots. They gave up a fifth rounder and got a seventh back and got 700 yards of catches from him starting week number four. No matter when right. this happened, and the Patriots really got a win out of this on the football field, didn't they? Uh, I think so. I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know what a you know a seventh with a, a, a fifth with a seven coming back is basically a six rounder. Okay, that's just the value of it. So basically, that means the Patriots got seven hundred yards for a six rounder. If you drafted a six rounder, you'd say, and we got seven hundred yards from that. We did great. Um, but you get nothing else. You get no development from him. You also probably stunted other players who could have developed, Cordero Patterson, Philip Dorsett. Um, so, you know, there's – depends on how you look at it. I would say it's clearly not the steal that everyone anticipated. You know, everyone was talking about how great it was the Patriots got Gordon for a fifth rounder. I mean, there was – Obviously, a reason that no team would, would offer a fifth round, and even the Patriots didn't offer the fifth. They offered a fifth with a seventh coming back. Um, so, I mean, I, I don't know if it's good or not, um, but this is the reality of it now. It's mm, a good point. Yep, it's a good point. Ian Rappaport joins us from NFL Network. You can follow him on Twitter at Rap Sheet for the latest on this Josh Gordon situation. They've also got a broadcast double header coming up this weekend, Saturday. Washington to Tennessee at 4.30 Eastern time and Ravens and Chargers at 8.20 Eastern time. From a football standpoint, how do you think this affects Tom Brady, the offense of the Patriots? Um, I would say uh, it, it affects them, but what the Patriots always have done is literally just deal with whatever they're dealt. So maybe this causes them to use 
James White and Rex Burkhead and Sonny Michelle a little more. Uh, maybe this forces Cordell Patterson in the lineup. He's been kind of a revelation this year. Um, Philip Dorsett's been fine, had a really good preseason and helped filling in for Edelman. So I think they'll be okay. And honestly, what we don't know is is the times where Josh Gordon ran the wrong route and was unreliable. We don't know that. So I don't, you know, I know the yardage was good. We don't know how many other plays he did not help. Uh, so I, I mean, this is not a great thing for the Patriots, but I would have a hard time imagining this is something that is severely damaging for them. Why do you think the Saints' offense has looked clunky and underwhelming two of the last three weeks? Um. You know, I think one of the main things is that they haven't had the best offensive linemen. And actually, Max Unger was out, too, I believe. I think he was out last week also. You know, when you don't have Tron Armstead, you can't block. Um, you know, that, that hurts. But, you know, what we're seeing now for them, for the Rams, probably officials letting teams play a little more. And you're seeing teams kind of adjust to these high-flying, prolific offenses. And this is usually what we see in the playoffs. We're just getting a little early this year, and, you know, I'm curious to see how the Sean McVeighs and Sean Paytons of the world adapt to, um, you know, adapt to guys covering them um, and stopping them. And, and they got some time; they got a couple weeks. Um, but we're going to see the really good offensive gurus figure this out, I think. So, when it comes to a team let's say, like the Rams, and again, kind of same thing. Goff has had a couple of bad weeks in a row. You think? The offenses will adjust going into the playoffs like the Saints and the Rams? I think so, yeah. Um, you know, and, and I don't know. The play, the weird thing about the playoffs is that it's, it's such a different animal, you know, because it's always a little tougher. It's always a little faster. It, it's always a little more hard-hitting, and the refs always let them play a little more. So it's almost like a different game. And I remember being, you know, my first time covering the Patriots I had gone from college to the NFL, players talking about how different it was in the playoffs, and I'm like, that's, that's weird. It should be the same game. It's really not. Um, so I do think everyone kind of needs to adjust for the playoffs, and I'm curious what we end up seeing. So if that's the case, do you think a team like the Bears that has such a ferocious defense is best suited for the playoffs because it is a quote-unquote different animal? Um. I think so. You know, the thing with the Bears is, you know, Trubisky, I think, has had a good season, but it, it has been up and down. He's certainly made a lot of mistakes. Um, and when it comes down to it, it, can he make the one or two big throws on, say, third and long that he needs to make? And I don't know. And, and I don't think he knows, and nobody does. I mean, that's the thing with having a, you know, a, a sort of defense and run game-based team. Like, you can go stay in any game. You can, you know, everything like that, but – it is going to come down to a quarterback making a play, like always. Um, and I don't know if Trubisky can do it. And that's what's going to be interesting to watch. I want to ask you about Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay, because we know he's a future Hall of Famer. We know he's one of the greats. And yet there seems to be more drama around him, who he likes, who he's frustrated with, McCarthy, relationship with coaches, more so than a Peyton Manning, more so than a Tom Brady, more so than a Drew Brees. Why does that follow Rodgers and not the other guys? Wait, wait, say that again. What do you mean? So Aaron Rodgers, it feels like there's more talk about who he likes, who he's frustrated by. Is he frustrated by the wide receivers? Is he frustrated by the offense? Is he frustrated by Mike McCarthy? Did he have a bad relationship with McCarthy? We don't hear that kind of those types of things about guys like Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, Drew Brees. Those guys seem to be play nice with others. Why do we hear more about Aaron Rodgers? Is it about that organization? Is it about the media around it? Or is it about Rodgers being different from a personality standpoint than those other guys? Yeah, I mean, I think Rodgers is a little different. Um, and, you know, Ben is kind of like this, too, where if you ask him a question, he'll really tell you the answer. Um, but, you know, it's to me, it's one of those things when a guy decides, like Rodgers has to be honest, sometimes you get this. You get the relationship fractures and you get the – um, you know, you, you get the uh, the sort of angst between the coaching staff, and you know, you get some of that with Ben too. Uh, I think if the Chargers were covered closely like that, you probably would get that with them as well. Brady would never do that, but behind the scenes, he's extremely serious about stuff like that. I just think it depends on what a guy says publicly, and you know, I sort of like when when um, 
I sort of like when quarterbacks come out and just say what they think because it gives us a better understanding of what's going on inside. But then the other side of it is, um, you know, it's not something that everybody wants to hear. That's interesting. So you think if there was the media that we have in Green Bay or Pittsburgh and San Diego, now L.A. around the Chargers, you might get the same thing out of Phillip Rivers, huh? Possibly, yeah. And, and I think Rivers is very demonstrative, and you see it on the field. You see it with reps. You see it with his players. It's just, you know, the atmosphere has not quite been like that with, with the Chargers. Ian Rappaport, NFL Network Insider. Follow him on Twitter for the latest, including the Josh Gordon news this morning at Rap Sheet. NFL Network has a very interesting doubleheader. Two games with playoff ramifications. Saturday, Washington and Tennessee at 4.30 Eastern. Ravens in charge of the late game at 8.20 Eastern on Saturday. Rap, always appreciate the insight, buddy. Happy holidays to you and yours and everybody in the Rappaport fam.